Hello and welcome to the Catherine's Table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Berserker01, Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender here at the Astro Pub and your facilitator here on the Captain's Table. This is a podcast where I bring people from all over the Star Citizen universe to talk about Star Citizen. It used to be a joke. Now it's not because CIG keeps us well informed and often overburdened with information. <laughs> Um, but before we get started, I want to introduce our two guests today. I'm going to start with um, the man, the myth, the legend, the Black Jurassic himself, Mr. Fastcart. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? And where can they find you? Uh, thank you, Paul. I just want to say welcome to another episode of Two Brothers, One Actual Pub. And I, I, I'm, your, I'm, I'm your guest, <laughs> uh, Fastcart FC. Glad to be here. Happy to be here. I'm part least- of Star Citizen. At least it's not on February, so you can't you can't raise me for yeah. For I, 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 was, I was checking my calendar. <laughs> you, you brought me back early. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just once, just once, <laughs> just once. Uh, what, what do you do in Star Citizen? Oh, okay, yeah. So, so, so I'm part of Star Citizen, and we do a uh, weekly podcast, well, three times a week, basically. But I, I'm, I do Soul Talk on Thursday, and we have our main show on on Sunday, which is Soul Citizen. And tomorrow we have an our Invictus discussion also. But um, we'll be doing a giveaway on on Soul Citizen. We're doing giving away a uh, theory, a storm, and a shoot. What's the other one? We're doing. We're giving out three steps. The links. But yeah, the, the links. Thank you. The links. Yeah. And, that, and that'll be tomorrow. So tune in for that on Soul Citizen. Awesome. Uh, and next is someone I've known for a little bit now, who's actually. Uh, if you watch my <clears throat> uh, Astro Historian stuff and you watch the the complete history of Star Citizen lore, uh, this this gentleman here is actually the person who scores those those uh, episodes. So if you've been enjoying them, you're, it's all thanks, at least in part, to Fist here. So Fist, who are you, what do you do in Star Citizen, and where can they find you? Well, I am Fist to Face, and what I do with, um, basically, I'm part of a group called New Soul, which um, basically is ran by me and my dad, uh, Pops in Space. Pops in Space, say hello in chat. Hello. <laughs> um, basically, what we do is we make uh, music for Star Citizen. Um, uh, right now we're branching into doing, um, a, you know, some, some machinimas, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we just put out a trailer, uh, for these young ladies, they call themselves the crew. Um, and their first, uh, in, um, endeavor adventure, as you want to call it, is going to be going into pyro. Um, we also have done music for Atmo Esports. We've done music for um, Soul Citizens. You, if you ever watch this show, you listen to the intro. Um, we've done basically we, we did a lot of remixes. Uh, we first started out doing that, and we just kind of just branched into, you know, like you said, with Paul working with you, and you know, it's been a pleasure. It's been a joy, and we can we'll continue to doing more. Um, yes, we do, uh, Astro. We don't have um, like free music at the moment. I am looking to. Uh, we are looking to do an album after we finish this Pyro project. And I did. And Paul, I haven't forgot about the Astro Chron- uh, the uh, the Lore Chronicles yes. about that uh, that album. Yes. So definitely, I just got a lot on the plate right now. So yeah. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I have to make I have to make a request to New Soul to do a song for the next uh, Citizen commercial because I'm pretty sure a lot of people got a, 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 a copyright strike for playing for, that For that one? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 oh, that's like a Lynch commercial, so please. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, listen, if, if CIG ever wants it, you know, like I said, we're here. Just all you got to do is let me know what you want. That's it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right, so today we're going to talk about a topic that has been around the the, the discussion uh, a lot recently. Um, one of the things, I'll kind of preface this with, there is a lot of new folks in Star Citizen, and a lot of folks who have been taking the plunge into Star Citizen as their main game. Whether you believe it's a game or not, if you're watching this, or even any of us here on the panel, um, is entirely up to you, but there are people who are playing it as if it's their main MMO, like they would be playing a WoW or a Knights of the Old Republic or any other MMO you can think of. There are people who are kind of dedicating themselves to Star Citizen, not just content creators, but players. Uh, in, in fact, entire organizations that have been doing it. So there's been 
some issues, as we all have known that since 318, the game has been very, very difficult to play. And there's been a lot of outcry from folks who find that whenever CIG ran events, like say Xenothread or Jump Town or these free flights, that they kind of make the game more unstable and difficult to play. And there's been a cry for, for, for people, or, or a lot of requests from people, I should say, for the game to move away from its current model and become have more of a stable server, a server that's separated out from sort of these events. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the idea of having a completely separate build for a free flight compared to the live servers. And I'll start with you, Fist, because you were the last one to introduce yourself. What are your thoughts okay. on that? The idea of having, uh, like, you know, kind of like a PTU, like when you drop down, you click free flight. So if you're just right. a new player, you just have the free flight option, not anything else, um, to kind of separate you know, the back end. Uh, when you mentioned it to us earlier, I never thought of it that way. Um, I think that that actually is a good idea, to be honest, um, because especially for, you know, like I believe you just mentioned, you talked about content creators, um, you know, being able to have a stable environment for them to always come to, to be able to, you know, separate it from, you know, any events that are going on that we know can cause troubles with um, the servers. But, you know, your content creators can come in and if they choose to go to those servers, that's fine, but they can always go into a stable environment, you know, to run an event. And I think that is a good idea um, if CIG does um, look to implement that, you know, so that okay. would be my take on that. Fastcart, your thoughts on it? I, I I'm not sure. It, I mean, it sounds good on paper, but I'm not sure how good, how feasible it would be because service costs money, and I, I, I'm not sure if, if they would they have to uh, spin up more servers or they, they could use the ones that they already have existing. But I would guess it, it would be more effort on their part because they have to, to do not even not only the GTU, not even the live test server, but now a free file server that all has to be maintained and kept, and kept up to date. So I think that would be take take more time. Well. I mean, I, I, I'm almost say it take more development time, but it's more effort on, on their part, the way they just, just have two servers and, you know, make, make it easier on themselves. Because, I mean, they do want the analytics that they get from the numbers and the, and the stress test of the, of, the, of the live server whenever there is a free fly. Because I'm pretty sure every time there is a free fly, they, they learn something new, they, they iterate on, 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 on the server connections and, and, and make everything better. So I'm not sure if, if they make it into three servers, they'll, they'll get the same results. Okay. Uh, Fast card, I'll ask but I will about say, this. Go ahead. I, I will say one more thing. I wish that they wouldn't call the live server live. I wish they call it, I mean, I know the, the, the full version, the full name of it is called the live test server. But calling it just live gives it a connotation that, I, I, that people may be confused about, especially new players, but that's my opinion. I agree with that, yeah. Uh, how about how about the how about entirely siloing off like say Xenothreat? So you have like an event server where you are running Xenothreat, but everybody who doesn't care about Xenothreat can go to their own build of of the game. Um, Again, it, it it might be more stable for the players, but I think CIG wants to stress test the server and Xenothreat and all the other events give them data that they wouldn't get otherwise get if they had three servers and, as opposed to two. So I I think they, they want the, they want the data that they that they get. So I'm not I, like I said I'm not against the idea at the player standpoint, but I think it, it, it wouldn't help the project overall, in okay. my opinion. Fist. Your thoughts on say even siloing off entire events? I I, I think I'm I'm, I'm going to give a good and a bad because I I do agree with what with, with Fast Card did say you know because we are always and always have to um think that we are in a testing environment irregardless whether or not you know we silo off you know one server for one thing it's still a testing environment um. But with that being said, you know, I do think that it is a good idea. But then again, like you said, you know, if they're trying to get to a goal of having all of these events running at one time in the game, like, say, for example, you know, like like they talked about Quanta, Quantum, you know, how is that going to work? 
um, because you have to really think about that generating missions within mm -hmm. itself within the game. So that's going to be a big issue. And how are they going to be able to test that? And, you know, I, I have to credit um, Griff for saying this. Like he says, as these things come online, you know, the game is going to become, unfortunately, more unstable. So it's I look at it from a, a growing pain. Um, of, of you know a situation that we're in and then of course we're a part of you know developing and pushing that you know uh that baby out <laughs> you mm -hmm. know if you can say it that way yeah so and i and i just want to add just, just, not just having all this stuff at one time having all 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 of us the player the quanta and the events going all at one time and be stable too and so that, that, that that's that, that's an important um point because i mean like they they i think they had the max of 125 or 120 for player cap eventually they they want to put as many people as, in in one survey as possible so there will be growing pains as we go forward and like, like I said before, for us, it, it may be, it makes sense for them to split it up because it'd be more stable. But for them, CIG, I, 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 they 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 need the, the numbers to stress test because I know they have ways to simulate the stress test, but it's, it's not it's not the same thing as having actual players pound the server. Okay. Right. Uh, Fist, I'll start you out with this next one because this is another thing okay. that's come up and uh, kind of a similar concept is, uh, you know, most mini games today have, uh, especially if say Steam and stuff like that, will have beta builds. You know, they'll have the live build and they have the beta builds. And right. what they'll do is they'll put all the new stuff in the beta builds and the beta builds will be just constantly up. Uh, and they may shut it down every so often, but it's usually just you know on for months and months and months so they can get a lot of data and testing and they can add new things slowly over time. And then once that they reach a point where like, hey, this is good, we're good to go. Then they push that out into live, and then the live game, you know, or the 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 stable version of the game. I often think of it as kind of a stable and experimental branch uh, of the game. And then they it, beta. You know, it, it kind of like yeah, beta or experimental yeah. branch. So right. the question, you know, becomes a lot of people are saying, well, this is something CIG is probably going to have to do in the long term when we get closer to beta uh, to start having this sort of mindset. Uh, maybe CIG should start pivoting away from that to have something that's like a stable branch, a, a branch of the game which is stable and ready and easy for people to get on, but just doesn't update. It doesn't update for maybe a year or however long mm -hmm. CIG cares about it. And then all of the PTU branches are the ones that are the the new ones, the, you know, oh, server meshing is in this PTU branch, and then you can, you can stay on that PTU branch for months and months and months and months, and then when they get the new PTU branch out, they just replace the PTU branch with a new one. And then eventually when they get around to it and say, oh, we'll just update the stable branch with, because we think it's pretty stable right now. So, right. Um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, we're seeing a lot of newer folks coming in who are like, hey, I want to buy the game. We talked about with people being avoiding 318 because of how unstable it was and not wanting to play the game. Uh, so the question is, do you think that's a good idea or not, Fist, to to sort of pivot away from this PTU live and more of a stable and experimental system? Okay, so let me make sure, because like you're saying like, okay, so get away from PTU live um, and do an experimental, and then like once everything is good and experimental, push it to live. Basically, if, if it, if so basically. instead, instead okay. of having like a PTU and then go to a go to a live testing right. environment, have like a PTU that runs for just as the live testing environment, and then when the new right. PTU comes out, you just okay, the new, I you get just it. Move over to the new PTU, and then once they feel like it's like, hey, this patch is good, we're stable, then they push it to a stable patch. So you just have one branch that just right. never updates or updates maybe once every couple of uh, months or maybe once a year. Uh, so that those people who want to play that's, that stable experience, they just do that right. instead of having to go into the experimental. That's not a bad idea because Icarus does that. Yeah. Um, Icarus does that where it's they have an experimental branch uh, of the game. It comes out about, I think, midweek, every week mm -hmm. when they push a update. And then once they know that that update is stable enough, they'll push it on Friday. The game will update. Um, and they do encourage all of their players to definitely jump into that experimental branch to make sure everything is good and, you know, fine and okay. And I do think that that is a good idea. Um, 
you know, from that standpoint of uh, allowing something once it is good. OK, now we can put it to this environment where, all right, you know, folks can kind of get that in their mind that at least I know I have, like you said, again, a stable environment to go to and I can still go to this environment over here to do my part as in testing, you know, the game. OK, so you're not against the idea. I'm not against it. OK, fast cart. I think it'll hurt CIG in the long run because and if they have a stable version, everyone, I think not everyone, but uh, that'd be the primary server, but they release ships like almost every, uh, like every other patch. Mm-hmm. And, and whenever they, they, they release a new ship, that money that, 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 they're, that they're making from pe- from having a new ship that's pliable or yeah, from having a new ship that's pliable. And if that, if they have to separate that from the, um, what do you call it? The stable branch. I uh, I think that that'll hurt the bottom line in, in the long run. I don't think she actually would want that. The way well, I, you know, I it, it, yeah, go ahead. Well, let me counter that to you though, fast card, because okay, you're saying that if folks will be in a folks will only gravitate towards a stable environment, which I'm not saying which which true. Um, and then they won't go and test and they CIG won't get their numbers. But you can also, you know, I don't know how how will this work? This could be a slippery slope, um, but incentives to go in test. And I'm going to start talking about, um, you know, uh, money value, but, you know, something like, you know, hey, you know, like if you go in and test and we see that, you know, you are a good tester and you're coming in, you know, we give you paint job or whatever it is, you know, something mm. of that, no, that, 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 that encourages folks to go in there to that environment. So the way that we can get this content out to folks. If that depends is a the, good solution, it depends on the incentive. Because I'm, mean, I, 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 I say this multiple times. I don't play the game that much. I play the game at patch. I play the game at during events like Invictus Week and and um and uh uh that I can't think of the name. Oh, oh Geno Threat. Sorry, the Geno Threat. Right. I, I come in, come in and play the game, and it, like they they do want the numbers and. Yeah, I don't. The, the, the essentials you you mentioned having a ship that that um that newly available, the new shiny that that that's an incentive, mm-hmm. right? So I, 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 mm, yeah, this, I, I, the idea would be necessarily that the ships are necessary aren't necessarily like you'd release the ships on the experimental, and then the ships would only go into the game once the experimental turns into the stable. So you would, right. you, you would, you, people would be able to be, go like, Hey, pyro's out. It's only in the experimental. It'll be in the experimental for three to six months. And then we might move it to stable if, if we think it's good enough. But if it's not, that if they have a 318 situation where it's just hot garbage for the entire time, <laughs> right. they can I just mean, roll, roll on to improve for, you know, 4.0.1, 4.0.2. And that means the people who are still having their stable experience doing playing the game aren't as interrupted by the, the goings on, but people still want to have their right. shinies, you know? Okay, when you put it that way, that, that does could, could convince me to, to toward that side. I'm just, I'm just worried about how much effort it would be for CIG compared to what they're doing now. Maybe yeah. it'll be easier. Uh, maybe they can streamline it somehow. But yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the the effort that they have to expand versus what they're currently doing. Yeah, that's true. I will say that that I think that's that will require more effort on CIG's right. part yeah. to, to do something like this because it will require them to run basically the PTU patch all the time rather than it running right. just for a short period. And then, and then they have to polish it and that makes sure, make sure it runs on, on the Q and A and then have that Eva Cotty. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you, you all want everything to be, to make the um, testing shorter, but I would just make the testing that, that much longer instead. It, it depends. But, but, I mean, before the game come out, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it it really depends. I mean, because like I said again, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm I can't really compare Icarus to Star Citizen, mm-hmm. other than them both being space games. But um, you know, to see if that experimental branch philosophy will work within a game like this, because it has so much in it, it's it's possible though. 
I don't know how. I mean, yeah, how I it would go. it's possible, but yeah, like, you know, so, um, I mean, right, right, maybe they could try it for and see see how it works for a couple of branches, and if it doesn't work out, go back to go back to the way it used to. But if it doesn't work out, keep it like it is. But right. I mean, that how much time do 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 you give an experiment like that, though? You know what? That's 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 a good question. I mean. That's a good question, like every other question in life. You know? <laughs> right. Do you do you, let me ask you this thing, fast crack, and then I'll ask you if it's, if it's the same question. Do you think something like this would encourage more people to come in and play the game? Do you think it would just status quo? Do you think it would just get people who are looking just to play the game to be happy and then it wouldn't really do anything? Do you think this would have any benefits to the game right now to have something like a uh, uh, like a stable if, version versus a live version. Ooh, you know, okay. If you if you have a stable version, or, 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 I'm sorry, you, you go to fist or me? You fist. Uh, you fast. fast okay. Right, sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> if you have a stable version and just keep the free fly on the stable version, I think that would that, be a huge benefit. Okay. My opinion. So different. Yeah. So having having like you know even if that is back, like say like in 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 this scenario, you would have something like. We wouldn't even have a 318. The PES wouldn't be out. It would it would still be in live. Would be 317.2, and you would still uh -huh. like the experimental would be what we're going right now with 318. Or 319. But again, uh, like the, people like like the new shinies and and yeah. and uh, uh, free fly have new shinies typically. So I'm, I'm not sure how, how, how that would balance out. You know. Well, the, like the, you the, said, the new shift concept shift. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. If 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 a new ship is coming out and you push it to experimental, right? And once that experimental branch, and I'm going based upon, like I said again, I'm going based upon Icarus. If that experimental branch is stable, right? Then you say, then you give that green light, and then push it to live. Well, I, that, I'm I'm going, I'm going by what Paul said because he said it, it, it'll be once a year, whatever it, 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 it update. Whatever, whatever wouldn't it would be, but unlike unlikely, we for instance, like say three eighteen in this situation would have unlikely been pushed to the stable servers because right. how bad it was, and even okay. three three nineteen probably wouldn't have been because of how bad but, how many issues it had. But at the same time, too, with three eighteen, is that's a difficult subject because mm -hmm. three eighteen PTU was stable or yeah, part of it, yeah. Were, right? Yeah. As soon as it went to alive. Uh, that brought in a, a different variable because you have so m you have so many more people mm -hmm. joining in and funneling in, and, know, and that's, so that's the argument. That's the argument again doing uh, doing it this that, that way because the, the mistake that I mean the problem that they had was people like uh, like uh, old time back is having too much too many crap in 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 their hands that would make make the database un unstable. If they only update like every six months or every year. They wouldn't be. They, they may not be able to to figure that out until well, until it, until it hit live. I think a lot of it too, though, because it, correct me if I'm wrong. Then you're looking at, like you said, talk about the database, and this is where I understand. You know, CIG and the community they want to keep their stuff and accumulate it over their, you know, time of going from zero to hero in mm -hmm. the game. You know that they don't like wipes, but unfortunately, and we talk about this a lot, that us. We 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 we're thinking as gamers rather than being testers, right? And yeah, that's the problem, you know. And I advocate that that a lot of times, you know, take a step back and think about it from a testing standpoint of view. Um, yeah, and, 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 and that's been gamer. my argument the, the whole time for the, 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 that I, I, I've been I've been thinking I've been I'm mean, I'm mean, saying as a gamer, yes, it, 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 it sounds good, but as a tester, there's issues. Right. And see, but this is the this is the solution that I, I believe with, with Paul, you, you, you're kind of tapping into is that, OK, for those gamers, content creators, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. having a stable environment for them to go to where they know they can. OK, hey, I can jump in uh, every week on Wednesday or whatever it is that I'm doing. Our events that I have an environment that I can go to you know, at least a, a good stable environment we can go to, we can set up, we can get in, we can do our content that for that evening, you know, whatever. And I think, like I said, again, that is a good idea from that standpoint mm -hmm. of view, point of view, but, it, but from a tester's standpoint of view for CIG, as far as when they want to get numbers, I get what you're saying, no fast card, because I'm not disagreeing, but on, a, you know, on the tested side of you, I am agreeing.
you know, mm-hmm. which uh, to throw even more of the things into this, the other problem that comes up to my, to mind, because this is again, this is an idea that I've heard p- like pitched out there by content creators and the community as a whole um, comes down to like we, we already talked about how 318 in PT was stable, but it wasn't it live. Uh, the, the other problem is how do you ensure that the, 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 the stable branch doesn't end up becoming just hot garbage? when you try to release it because now everyone wants to, all the people will be like, Oh, stable branch is being updated. I don't want to have to play the, the, the broken patch. So I'll play the play it when it's more stable. And because they didn't get enough testing now, suddenly, you know, what would to say that 319 or 320 would have been released anyways to stable. And it would still have been in the same situation we're in now because how right. do you and, 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 Good. I'm sorry. And that goes back to 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 what I, what I was saying. How, how much time do you give to give it to experiment before you decide whether that it was a, it was a su- successful experiment or a failed experiment? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, let's 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 think about this another way uh, as well, because we'll think about it in terms of. Oh, I had it in my brain and lost it. <laughs> uh, in terms <laughs> of. Um, playability right uh, uh-huh. there's a lot of there's a lot of frustrated people who want to play the game but they just aren't able to play it because of 30ks or because of other bugs and other issues um and a lot of people are saying like this is going to turn off players and people will just abandon the game uh do you think cig is risking not uh, and by not changing by keeping this kind of going and saying well the live environment is a test environment do you think they're risking long-term damage to uh to their reputation especially since cig does put out commercials every every new patch saying playable now at the end and people have already started to kind of like rip on that idea of their own marketing is trying to push this game as completed game but then you know when they get called out on it they go oh no it's testing it's testing it's testing it makes them look kind of (laughs) shifty on the on on that side do you think that cig may need to change their own like Mm. tune marketing how how they're marketing the game because that seems to be a, a sour, sour spot with with uh, with uh, with many not just content creators but many players as well. What do you think, there, Fist? I'm 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 going to say yeah. I really do think CIG does need to stop. What the <laughs> the I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that from a point of view that the the commercial is not bad from a production standpoint or anything like that because obviously it's phenomenal and when something like that is phenomenal it catches folks's eyes Mm -hmm. and now a person who as we talk about like i said again a gamer who sees something like that and they see the the shiny the bells and the whistles oh my goodness they see playable now in Mm -hmm. big red yellow letters and and we all know from a marketing standpoint of view you know if anybody's you know taking it you know colors attract your eyes and they they you know when, when you do that you, you know that uh so when, when you have something you know that's bright red bright colors boom what are your eyes going to focus to you know and they're not going to read fine print and because the video is going so fast at you know all of the fast-paced action you're not going to be thinking, okay, well, let me sit here and click at the last second to find out what <laughs> wait, that wait, fine fist. print is saying. You don't do that? You don't click at the last second? Is that what you're telling me? I will you tell you. You don't pause I... the video at, at the exact moment when, when that fine print comes on, come on at the bottom, man? Yo, you got you to gotta get on that. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> you for pointing out my weaknesses, but um, <laughs> no, I appreciate that. But no, and, and 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 like I said, I'm I'm not going to be a hypocritical about it. Like like as if I'm not uh, guilty of it, you know. I, yeah, of course, yeah. you know. But I have just learned to understand where the game is. Yeah, but, and, new, but new players won't. won't, won't but new have players that won't. And that's mm-hmm. where I have. That's where I've always said that when I've seen them first start doing that with the commercials, I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, hold uh-huh. on, because a person you know, that that's fresh off of playing uh any other game uh especially a call of duty player oh my goodness uh-huh. i mean apex or something like that and they see that oh my goodness you see all of that action going in a playable now okay yeah let's go in there a uh, group of friends and next thing you know um the environment is not stable um I'm, i i got to take a piece from um from from what uh, uh, uh another game that i back ashes of creation uh what steven sharif said 
one of the things is unfortunately is that when you have open development like this is that as you're going through growing pains folks will see uh, a stage of the game that is at its kind of like uh it is infancy and it'll be off-putting so i'm gonna liken it to that and say if you bring in a person and they're attracting they're coming from this game that's already polished or you know pretty much done and you're advertising it as it is done and now they jump into it and it puts a bad taste in their mouth that's difficult to reel that person back in and also you have no. the content creators who who may be a new player may have a bad experience and there may be a very popular content creator with uh, with uh, with uh, many many subscribers and followers and that, that is, uh, everyone who follows that that content creator will say oh this is a bad game i'm gonna skip it so yeah i, I can see it's just your point there but as far as the um the, qu the question about um damage reput reputation I'm understanding it's a darn if you do, darn if you don't, because I don't think CIG can win, uh, can, can win either way. Because yes, they could um, build on some, for some players, the new players who who like the this, this stable environment, but they may lose players who who want um, something to be uh, updated more, more more often, and you know vice versa. People who 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 decide to go not play the stable environment to go to the experimental. Um, uh, service and have bad experiences and especially like, like I said your content creator and, and you're streaming that stuff that, 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 that'll hurt you too so like I said darn if you do darn if you don't in my opinion you're right but to jump in again I, I, to counter that because to going back to what you talked about Paul with the experimental part though right mm -hmm. if they're pushing the if they're pushing out videos like this and obviously the playable now and underneath it it says alpha you know playable alpha right and it's advertised unfortunately to a, a gamer that man this is stable this is something that's ready looks like it's ready to go um then the experimental thing makes sense you know having a stable environment you know a good 90 percent of the time for you know trying to funnel those those folks in for, for for those commercials you know until you can push a stable patch you know from the experimental branch okay all right um this i i, I don't we're not going to solve the the problems of this over here but i think it was i think it was, <laughs> I think Wait, it was like, the, what the whole point of this conversation is paul <laughs> right. what's the point <laughs> well i think the point the point is to, to, to bring light to it because i think there's a lot of people who are very frustrated with the game right now a lot of people who are long-term backers and short-term backers who feel like like they can't play the game they paid for and so the question becomes is there a way that you can have your cake and eat it too. Is there a way that CIG could improve their own reputation mm. with their own game? Obviously, they're going to have to put in effort no matter what they do, whether making the game better or not, um, in the short term. Because, you know, we don't know, to be pure honest, none of us here know when CIG is going to release server meshing. None of us know if CIG is going to improve the 30K situation. We don't know if or when they will do those sorts of things. It could be... 319.1 could fix everything. 320 could be the best patch we've ever seen in the history of the game. We don't know. Or it could do nothing. <laughs> it, could, it could make things well, worse. Hold on, hold on. Before you get to that, let, let me control my magic eight ball. Hold on, let, let me see. <laughs> Outlook cloudy. Oh, darn it. Yeah, we don't know. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got got to read the tea leaves. We got to see how the birds fly when when you release them. You know, got to got to shake up the bones, shake, shake them bones, well, shake them bones, yeah. and throw them on the ground, and read, read the entrails. You know, you know, uh, it, it's just the nature of a game in development. There's just a lot of things that are that are going on that CIG has yet to implement. It's going to cause some problems, uh, but I think it's a good a good discussion at the very least because I think CIG right. the CIG always asks for feedback, and this is a great way of giving those feedback. Right. So. I mean, we got to think about it, Paul. This is a game that we've never seen. Yeah. So this is this is this is un. I'm trying to think of the word that the, the the saying you know that we're we're in uncharted territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, unprecedented. I, I thought you were going to say that unprecedented, but that too also. Uh, we just yeah, it's it, there's it, as much as people will say and make fun of it and that kind of stuff. This this game is no one's ever tried something like this. 
And there's a reason right. why no one's tried something like this because it's insane. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I think we're all go, going in a good, in better direction because I, I'm I'm not hearing uh, scam citizen as much anymore as I used to. So that yeah. that's an improvement at least. Well. I'll ask you this, Pascal, because I know you also uh, tend to keep up to date on a lot of those those funding trackers. How is Star Citizen doing currently with uh, Invictus this year? I'm, I'm I'm glad you asked that, Paul, because I <laughs> I looked it up just just before the show. Let me see if I can, yeah. see if I can find the uh, right tab. But um, they I, I far new new players um on the day the day after in, Invictus started with the free fly, they they made ten thousand new accounts. Hmm. And new players and new, and new accounts in the game, and the average uh, before that was like eight hundred to twelve hundred f- f- per day. And the day after the ten thousand, they went down to nine thousand, then seven thousand. So it's, it, it, it's still it's still above the 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 normal average for for for, for um per day. I have to calculate that and see how many that um how many that, that is uh, uh, for, for the for the time in victory. But that like five fifteen. 25, yeah. So it's like quite a few players, uh, no account made doing Invictus. And um, as far as the money thing goes, um, well, if you look at the crowdfunding bridge, um, tracker the CID puts out, um, I think they made the most money on the first day with almost $2 million, $1.9 million. And the last couple of days had been slow. Let me refresh just to make sure they haven't been a day updated. No, but still says 26. But they made 1.356 million on the 26 and 1.545 million the day before that. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're making bank. Um, I yeah. think it's less than than what it was last year, though. Because you look on the, um, not Urkel, C2 game has a dashboard yeah. now for the funding. So I think it's, it, it's less, they're not making as much money as they did last year. Yeah, I, it I seems- have to make sure. I didn't know because I, I, I know CCU game sometimes backdated a little bit. Last I checked, CCU game, it said they made about thir- they're, they're at thirteen million. Um, yeah, thirteen million. Last year they made twenty one million, um, but at thirteen mm-hmm. million, and we still have yet to go through all of the Kraken releases and uh, and the rest of the rest of the the kind of sales uh, for. Um, the various stuff we're probably going to see larger than tw- twenty twenty one, which was thirteen million. We're already at at or over that so yeah so, we're, we're and, um and, I, I, and I, I, yeah. I was just gonna say just in general like in funding is a good way of looking at like are people coming in are people older backers spending money or new backers coming in so it seems like we're still getting a lot of newer folks coming in but it's hard to tell exactly how but also got to be. take an account to ship because we had two sub 100 dollars shipped um yeah for, that's, 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 yeah, it's supposed to like having one less expensive ship and one more expensive ship. So I think they're probably selling more ships, but, you know, m- m- not making quite as much money. And chat's telling me there was more uh, mm-hmm. more new uh, increases this year than there were last year. Uh, though f- one, from... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, oh, one, one thing I, I, I will say, I'm disappointed with the CCU game uh, when it comes to CCUs this year for Invictus because they, they, they did like one per, one every two days, whereas um, in the past they, they, they've had more CCU specials, the war bonds and stuff like that. So I, I can see that, 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 that makes an impact on, on, on the funding. Yeah. Um, I, when I'm looking, at, um, I'm looking at the changes, and apparently according to the CCU game, there has only been about seventy four thousand citizens this this uh, this month, versus last year they had one hundred and seventy five thousand. So that seems about mm-hmm. a lot less <laughs> in terms of new players. But uh, we also saw still more than new, normal. <laughs> yeah, still more than I mean that was uh, there was only sixty seven thousand in two uh, thousand and uh, twenty twenty one, and before that it was uh, slightly more. So uh, it's kind of going up and down, but. Uh, to end it off on 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 less of a gloom and doom uh, thing, let's let's think about overall. I'll ask you the, the the broad question. I'll start with you, Fist, on this one. Uh, do you think the game's heading in the right direction? Do you think CIG's heading in the right direction, or do you think they're kind of spinning their tires or going backwards when it comes to development right now? I, uh, you know, from my opinion, I I think they're heading in the right direction. Um, I mean. That's from my opinion. I mean, obviously, I would like. I'm. They're making progress. Yeah. 
Um, so progress is heading in a direction, in a right direction, at least. I mean, they made a bump, a big bump. Mm-hmm. You know, 318 was a big bump, and hopefully they learn from it. Because a lot of times, like I, I, I always say from 318, I would have rather, I'd rather have 318 happen now than have 318 happen later. Okay. You know, because obviously I've, I'm a big MMO fan, you know, from playing uh, DC Universe, you know, uh, all, all the way up to now playing Star Citizen. So I've seen, you know, uh, launches be horrible mm-hmm. um, in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, technical things and stuff like that. So again, 318, I look at it as a growing pain. So when I saw it happen, I wasn't mad. I added and I get it, but that's again, you know, me look thinking it from a, a tester standpoint of view. Mm-hmm. So if I'm looking at where they're headed, if I'm looking at it from a tester standpoint of view, yes, I think that it is going, you know, in the right direction, you know. But if I was thinking it from a gamer standing point of view, then I would be like, ah, oh, pounding my desk, you know, <laughs> and <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> Where's my game? <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, fast card, your thoughts, your personal thoughts on, you know, is CIG heading in the right direction? Are they just spinning their tires? Are they going backwards? I'm, I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm, I'm going to refer to yesterday's uh, Star Citizen Live because um, some people, when they follow the, the, the open development of, of, of Star Citizen, they, they like to see the, the lore like you do, or like they, they prefer the, the Buckmaster report like they, they previously did. My thing is ship shape, and yesterday was like an hour long ship shape. And I, I, I like the, I like the, 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 the keeping the communications, lines of communications open for, with, with regard to shipping the, shipping the backlog and, and where ship currently stand. So I, I think that. Heading in, in the right direction, in my in my opinion. So yeah, I I I, I almost studied yesterday's uh, starting live in anticipation that we might we would cover that, but I guess we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah one thing, one that. thing I will say is that uh, I I wish that CIG would take more ships out of the backlog and and finish them as it, as opposed to um putting putting new ships there in the backlog because we we got the storm coming um. I had it yesterday, but they took out the, the link. So that, they, they they finished one, then added a new one. So one for one, I guess I can't complain too bad. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the backlog in the question and answer session. But for now, we'll uh, mm-hmm. uh, we'll leave that this. Thank you so much for Fist and for Fastco for coming on. Make sure you're checking out New Soul and Soul Citizens uh, <clears throat> and their, their projects. And of course, catch us live at twitch.tv slash the Astropub, youtube.com slash the Astropub live to uh, on Saturdays at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And to come ask your own questions and come join us live and co- join the discussion and chat and such. Um, this is where the recording is going to end, but we're not stopping. We're going to go, we take a few minutes break to go, go into, uh, to get something to drink and such like that. But we'll roll right into question and answers from uh, the chat. So if you wanted to come check that out, the, the link for the full VOD will be above fast cards head. So you can check that out uh, at your own time, click the link and you'll be able to watch the whole thing. There'll even be like a little timestamp for when we move on to the next portion. So with that being said, uh, thank you for joining us. And like I say, every time, hope to see you someday in the black. If I can hit the right buttons. <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything. I'm trying to be good. <laughs> <laughs>